In today's video, we're gonna take this beautiful LTD EC1000 Deluxe with Fishman Transducer Acoustic Pickup that I demoed in a previous video. If you wanna check out that video, you can click the link down below. But in today's video, we're gonna modify the guitar. And I know some of you are confused by that. Some of you are like, well, wait a minute, the guitar looked pretty perfect in the last video. Well, it was. Not every Sharpen My Axe video is about taking something that's not good and making it better. Sometimes it's taking about something good and turning it into something different. And I thought it would be fun to take this guitar and see how versatile we can make it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change a few things. First, let's talk about the pickups. It came with a Seymour Duncan JB and 59, and those are great pickups, and it really worked in this guitar. But I wanna change it to something different. We're gonna put in some other Seymour Duncan pickups. These are the Seymour Duncan P-Rails. And what P-Rails are, are they're a pickup that essentially has a P90 and a single coil pickup. So it's a humbucker that you can split to be P90 or a single coil. We're not only gonna add these pickups to the guitar, we're gonna add some Think something called a triple shot. The triple shot is a pickup ring that has some switches. And let me explain what this guitar will be able to do once we add this. So essentially what we're gonna be doing is installing these pickups and they're gonna look like this. You're gonna have the P90 and a single coil. That is a blade style pickup. What we're gonna do is add the pickup ring which has two switches. And these little switches allow you to do a couple things. With the two switches pushed inward, you'll have a full humbucker. When you put the two switches outward, you will have a humbucker in parallel. And when you put the two switches this direction, you'll be having a P90. When you put the two switches in the opposite direction, you will have a single coil. So essentially what you have in both pickups, I should say, let's do it this way, two P90s, two single coils, uh, so if you want a telly sound, you'll switch to the two to single coils. If you want that P90 Les Paul sound, you can switch to a P90s. If you want to put a P90 in the neck, that's real common right now, like with Reverend guitars, put a P90 in the neck and a humbucker in the bridge. Just using the switches, you can do that. Essentially, you'll get tons of combinations. Now imagine this, now you'll also have the piezo bridge. And more importantly, this is something that you can do very, very, very easily with very little wiring knowledge. The best thing about this, this kit, uh, I should say, is that you wire it all up outside the guitar. So super, super easy. So let's go ahead and open this up. You can buy these individual too, by the way. You're gonna get all the, of course, the rings and screws. So there'll be one labeled for bridge and one labeled for neck. So that's the only thing you need to be aware of. So we'll start with the bridge. Now when it comes to the, the triple shots, it doesn't matter which ones you use. They're not labeled anything different from each other. There is one specifically though, you need to be aware there is a triple shot specifically for Les Paul. It has a little carved piece of plastic. I'm actually going to put this together and the switches go towards you. So imagine if this is sitting in the guitar, you want the switches uh, on the uh, top side of the guitar so you can get to them. So this is how we'll wire it. You'll see there's a piece of double stick here. And what that's gonna do is allow you to double stick this onto the bottom of the pickup so that you can then connect all the wires from the pickup. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna run the wire like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this wire short. Now, if you think you're gonna install these pickups out and you wanna leave all this extra wire, uh, you know, then go ahead and do that. Here's my favorite part. Everything on the bottom is labeled. So W for white, G for green, B for black, R for red, and G and D for ground. So essentially you're just going to solder each one of these wires right to that actual component. So let's go ahead, separate the wires out. So we're gonna do white, green, Green, black, 
red bear in that order. Okay, and I'm going to loop this right in to sew. And then I'm going to cut all those wires because they don't need to be that long. And we'll go ahead and strip them. Okay, go ahead and twist them. That's important. Okay, now once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and put some solder on them. Okay, a little bit here. Just bring the solder through the wire. So you're heating the wire up. Okay. And now, like I said, let's go ahead and line these up correctly in the correct order. We're going to start with white, and it works just like that. Okay, next one is going to be green. Okay, green. Okay, next one is black. I don't want the red one to cross over the black, okay. There we go. You can see how I did this, tuck this wire. We could go on the outside, depends on the guitar's cavity. And then now you can see what's going to happen is, is we'll run this ribbon out of the way. And that's how it's gonna go. This is gonna be the new wire. And the great thing about this wire is it's two, two conductor. So just two wires, so nothing fancy. And now we'll go ahead and make the next one. So I took the strings off the guitar and before we get do anything else, I wanna show you uh, that this bridge, cause it is the transducer, is wired. So see the wiring right there? We don't wanna damage this and we don't want this to come off. So what we're gonna do is just painters tape this down. The painters tape won't hurt anything and uh, it'll make sure everything is just safe and secure. Then what we wanna do is flip the guitar over and remove this back cavity control. All right. First things first, let's undo this zip tie. And luckily for us, they left lots of wiring so we can get in and out and mess with stuff pretty easy. Okay, so all we're gonna be really messing with is these two pickups. So let's see what they have here and how we're going to figure this out. Cause we really need to see everything. Let me show you what you're looking at because this might be a little confusing to some. So what you have here is the ground wire. You can see the green and the silver going to the outside of the pot. That's the ground of this pickup. The red and the white are the coil split. So that's attached to this switch right here. And of course, this black wire is the uh, wire leading that's to the, that's the, the output of the pickup. So what's great is, we just desolder this, and we just have to make note that this pickup is going to the green wire. And we don't know which one's which yet, but we'll we'll have that all figured out pretty soon. Okay, so let's go ahead and just desolder that. It'll come right apart. In fact, something like this, just go ahead a little heat. Just a little heat, and there you go. See how easy that is? Now what we wanna do is figure out which pickup this is. 
And we're gonna do that, we're gonna flip it over. And let's go ahead and screw the pickups. And that's the neck. So what we want to do right now, while we still remember what's going on, we want to know that green is to the neck. So green is to the neck and gray is to the bridge. There you go. Okay, so now what we want to do is we're going to run the wire for the neck through. Okay, so now that I've installed the two pickups, uh, I went ahead and looped this one. This is the neck pickup. That's just so I know that's the neck pickup. We know earlier the neck connected to the green. What they're going to is they're going to the three-way switch right here. So all we're gonna do is connect these, these wires. What's great is we don't need to connect the grounds off these wires. We're just using the, the hot. And on these, we will shorten all this up a little bit. This is really long. So let me go ahead and start shortening some things. Okay, there we go. Now we have three wires, but so you know, two are ground and one is the hot. Black and the ground are both grounds. And like I said, in this case, we don't need this ground. We're only using this as the hot wire. My guess is they use this wire just because they had this. Blend these together and we'll solder shrink tube them. Now what I'm going to do is put these two together and so that way we can just ground this out when we're ready. Okay, and we're gonna ground this. We're gonna ground these to that pot. Okay. Before we zip tie these back up, we're going to install this treble bleed I made. But let me show you how we're gonna wire it a little bit differently. So what I'm gonna do if you're looking at this switch, this would be the tone control, the push pull. And here is your volume pot, okay? And normally you would take the, these are the terminals. Normally you would take the terminals and put the treble bleed between the input and the output terminals on the volume pot. What we're gonna do is run that treble bleed over to this switch and then back to the output terminal. So what I wanna do now is just show you how a push-pull potentiometer works. And whether it's push-pull or push-push, it doesn't matter. All switches like this work the same way. It looks intimidating, but it's not. What you have, of course, is you have the potentiometer on top. This is your volume, or if you want it to be a tone control, you can make it that. But either way, think of it as separate than this box down here. This box is actually the, the switching component. Now, what you have is two rolls of terminals, and sometimes you have three, but in this case, we're using two, which is very common. And here's what I want to explain. The middle terminal is going to be input. So, for instance, whatever you want to go in into this, uh, you're going to put in the middle. Now, in the down position, the bottom is the output. Makes perfect sense, right? So, if you want something to come in here, come out there, you leave it alone. However, if you pull up on it, it switches from the bottom to the top. So essentially think of it like this way. We are coming in this way and we were going out here. Now we're going out here. So how does this work with what I'm doing, which is a treble bleed? Well, what I'm doing is I'm taking a basic volume pot like this and a treble bleed, which is a very basic thing like this. You can buy these at Stumac or Reverb or eBay or make them yourself. They're very, very, very inexpensive. There's tons of them out there. There's all kinds of variations. The one I use is very basic uh, and I have all kinds, but the ones I use just because I can buy these in bulk and I made them really cheap and I've been using them for years. So what I'm gonna do is take the, put it to the input of the volume pot and then I'm gonna run it to, it doesn't matter which side, probably whichever's closest, which on this case would be this side. I'm gonna run it to the center, okay? 
So right now, nothing's happening. There's no completed circuit. There's nothing completed here to have any effect on the guitar. So I'm running it to the, to the middle terminal. Now what I can do is run a wire from the bottom terminal here to the output terminal there. And of course, in the down position, that would complete it and it would work. When I pull up on this pot, it'll switch from this terminal to the top one and then the circuit is broken. So, cause it's not completed anymore, this treble bleed is not in the circuit, has no effect on the guitar in any way. Now, if you wanted it to be the opposite, all you'd have to do is run a wire from the top terminal. So for instance, down position, you would be nothing connected. So non-completed circuit. And then the wire would be connected when you pull up. That's just how you do it. I hope that explains it. Like I said, it's a very basic thing with a little bit of research and time and a, and a basic schematic. I think anybody can put this together relatively quickly. First things first, I'm gonna put some shrink tubing on this. Okay. Just run it, run it through this eyelet. So what we're gonna do is take this treble bleed and solder right to the center lug, like in the diagram. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this wire through the bottom tab. Run it to that eyelet. Okay, we'll solder. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull this all out. Zip tie this back up. Everything is as it should be. We're all hooked up. And now I'm gonna give you a little sample of what came out from the pickups. First, we'll start with the bridge position running into a clean amp. We're gonna be running my Fender 68 Princeton. It's entirely stock, stock speaker. And I'm gonna be running a Shure 57 mic. And uh, we'll use that for all the tones you're gonna hear until we get to the uh, overdrives. <laughs> Now, if you want that P90, all you do is push the switch out. Now you're going to get the P90. And it brightens up a little bit. I feel like I'm not losing a whole lot of volume. I'm just getting a little bit more brightness and a little bit more punch. Uh, the, the humbucker is pretty dark. Here's the humbucker again. Now here's the single coil. This is the blade single coil. And uh, I like that, but really what I'm going after is the P90s. Now, when you install these pickups, you can set it up to where the blades are the out, or on the outside, and that will kind of give you a better single coil tone. However, I really want to enhance the P90 tone, so that's why the P90s are on the outside. Now, the, my favorite thing that these guitar, these pickups do is if you put the two switches outward from there in parallel. What that means is, if you put them in, the two switches inward, you're gonna have a humbucker, which is basically the humbucker you're familiar with, a series humbucker, in series humbucker. But in parallel with the two switches outward, you're gonna have the same sound, generally speaking, as a Stratocaster in position two on this bridge position. So it's gonna be two single coils, but they're not obviously in series, they're in parallel. So you really get that kind of more of a funk kind of thing. Now what I love about that is, that's what I love when you add that, that uh, acoustic in there. Now here's the acoustic mixed in. Love that. So now we're gonna go to the neck position and we're in the humbucker mode. So let's hear the humbucker. And of course, uh, real warm. And then we're gonna go to the P90 sound. And I really wanna compare that now to the single coil. Here's your single coil.
And again, they're subtle. I mean, it's not a huge difference, but to me, it's enough of a difference when I'm playing to hear the difference of that, of that P90 always has that punch and a fuller, deeper sound, more mids to me. But what I want to show you now, of course, is that uh, parallel position. This would be the equivalent of position four on a Stratocaster. <laughs> Let's hear that just, that's a parallel of two pickups in parallel. Uh, here's two pickups in series. And of course, I like it now that you can mix things up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a single coil on the bridge, put it in the middle position. Now I have a single coil and of course the, uh, the parallel pickup. So I, I'm basically running three pickups right now. I really like that. Now let's go ahead and do that P90. This is the P90, but again, with running the two neck pickups in par parallel. And then why not? Humbucker and the bridge and parallel. Now what's nice, of course, is you can run two P90s. You can see where this just keeps going, right? So now we have P90s, uh, both positions with the middle position. And what I love now is, uh, let's go ahead, run the uh, the neck pickup in parallel. Of course, it won't matter, I'm gonna turn this on. And uh, I'm gonna run the, the, the bridge pickup in parallel. So I'm running all four pickups and the piezo. Now what I want to do is uh, I want to go to the neck position and I'm just going to go ahead uh, in the neck in the P90 position, run a light amount of overdrive. For the overdrive, I'm just going to use my overrated special by Way Huge. It's the new smaller version and uh, here we go. And I'm going to show you the uh, treble bleed. So what that does is it allows me when I'm turning the volume pot down, it doesn't choke off the highs. You get to hear the highs. Go ahead and we can bypass that and listen to what happens when it bypasses it. What I like about treble bleeds is like I said, it's great if you want to back the volume off, especially when you do an overdrive and not lose the overdrive. You don't want to clean up, you just want less gain. Where this really cleans it up fast if you don't have the treble bleed. In a system like this, that I've done where it's installed with a bypass switch, basically you have the best of both worlds. Of course, the treble bleed is never engaged until you roll the volume back off the volume control, so there's no issue there. And when you do roll the volume back, if you don't want it, you can bypass it. And with a very easy switch of where I soldered points, you just switch to the other terminal, you could actually make it to where it's always bypassed, you have to actually pull up to engage it. So just something to add, and I have a whole video explaining this. Uh, if you wanna look down in the uh, link below, uh, it'll explain how I did the treble, bypass, uh, treble bleed and how I installed it with a bypass. Obviously a pretty diverse guitar, but let's go ahead and switch to a much more aggressive amplifier. For my overdrive tone, I'm using a Friedman Dirty Shirley Mini with a Keeley Caverns delay and reverb pedal in the effects loop. 
running it through my custom 212 cabinet with V30s, mic'd with a Shure 57 mic. So let's start with the humbucker. This is the humbucker in the bridge position. <laughs> P90. I really like the P90 more. video I wanted to do something different show you guys something interesting and put some features in the guitar that I thought were pretty easy to do for uh, anyone that just wants to get a soldering iron out and install this stuff the other thing I added of course was a DiMarzio locking strap made in the USA uh, it's my favorite strap it's the only strap I've been using since I pretty much started playing guitar and uh, so I thought I'd stick one on there since it's a sharpen my axe but what did it all cost well the pickups ran about $199 for the set the pickup rings ran about $80 for the set and the strap was $20 four dollars now the treble bleed you can make these for as cheap as two to three dollars and buy them for as much as fifteen dollars however i really recommend if you just want to buy one the mojo tone one it's about six dollars it's pretty reasonable i also added some string joy strings which are about eleven dollars and ninety cents so that brings the entire total up to 298 dollars all right as always i want to thank you guys not only for hanging out with me today but stay until the end of the video and as always thank you for your time and know your gear <laughs> <laughs>